we don't just make albums just to fulfill a contract or you know that sort of thing. We we make albums when we have good songs that we believe in, recorded something that we accept as a great album. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Tommy Shaw of Styx. Hey dude, how's it going? Hey Katie, it's great. It's great. We're in Portland, Oregon this morning, and it's beautiful out. It's been beautiful all since we've been up in the Pacific Northwest. Well, and we're, when you're talking about we and where, uh, you're talking about the band. You're on the road, man. You are live and unzoomed doing another great tour. We are, and it's it's just, it's just so nice to be back out here and seeing so many fans, and uh, it's just it's just you know hours of joy every night. And this is a this is a tour. Uh, um, that's really fun because it's Ario Speedwagon is out with you and Loverboy. Listen, you know, yeah. I, I talked to Mike Reno. I talked to Kevin Cronin. Everyone was psyched getting out on the road. And now it's actually happening. What hijinks can you fill me in on? Have there been any shenanigans out on the road? Well, you know, we really haven't had time to get into the sh shenanigans phase of it. Yes, <laughs> that will happen. You're not bored enough yet? <laughs> well, you know, just because of the, the nature of, of, uh, you know, the, of trying to keep everybody healthy. There's yeah. not as much uh, hanging around with each other, but we're doing that just so that, taking all precautions mm -hmm. so that the tour can continue. But we, we run into each other in catering and uh, it's, it's really been fun to catch up with Mike Reno and the guys because I've known them for years. I mean, since right after I joined Styx, oh. uh, I met them before they were lover boys. And uh, I got to get up on stage and, and jam with them that night. And uh, they're just the greatest guys. And they're so good. You know, you don't think you, you know, you know, you'll see a band and you're like, I think I, you know, I, I know the hits, but there's so many hits. Mm -hmm. love and they are just such a great band. I mean, it's just night after night, so consistent. And they're, they're fun and they're funny, you know. Um, hey, Mike is funny. I was is. surprised when I was chatting with him. I was like, oh, he's like a firecracker. He's great. He is. And he's just, uh, you know, and he, night after night, everybody in the band, you know, I just, I'll take a, you know, I'll, I'll watch one guy one night or I'll listen to Spider on the bass guitar. And they're just, they're just monsters uh, of musicians. And, and REO is, is, they're really in a great zone right now. Well, you and Ario Speedwagon and Kevin Cronin and the guys, it's like your BFFs forever at this point because you, how many tours have you guys done together? Like, I lost count. So many years. And it's fun because obviously people are used to it. They're like, yes, when Styx and Ario are going to announce a tour and who's going to be the wild card. And this, this year right. uh, it is, it's, it's Loverboy. Um, and you did mention jamming. Okay, so tell me about yeah. when you're out on a mega tour like this, how often do the bands, you know, get together and jam for the audience and someone sits in on someone else's song and you kind of piggyback and surprise the audience? Well, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to do just because of the schedules. Mm. Uh, uh, and, you know, because there's three bands, there's only so much time in the evening. So everybody's got to get their they're set in right uh, not like if, it, if there was two bands then there's uh there's more time to play with but uh right now we're just every band's going out there and throwing down their best uh one thing you will notice if you look is you'll see guys from other bands watching your set uh because we're, we're all fans of each other yeah and uh so it's it's fun to look out there and see what new guitar dave amato has you know, it's starting to be a contest of who's got the coolest new guitar. For those of you just joining us, I'm Katie Darrell. He's Tommy Shaw. We're talking about sticks, uh, you know, out on the road. It's live and on Zoom, coming to a town near you. You know, last time we spoke, Tommy, we had some really important business that we covered. You right. had just adopted some chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the chickens. Well, there, there was a, there's a place in Nashville called Rent a chicken <laughs> and they were they will help you get started with chickens and what they do is they'll bring you out a minimum of three and okay. they've got these little uh these little 
miniature chicken houses uh, that are almost like a wheelbarrow that have wheels in the front and handles on the back. And on the bottom is just this tightly woven box wire. Uh, and so the grass on the ground can come up through it. So they can, they can uh, you know, eat grass and bugs and, and very, so it makes them uh, like almost like free range. <laughs> but, and in Nashville, you, at least around where we are, uh, it's, um, it's lots of trees and lots of fields and things like that. And we, uh, we don't, uh, treat our grass because there's so many animals around. We don't we don't poison the grass, so right things like that. So we have tons of birds, and so that they, they will what they'll do is they'll just go out there and they'll eat the grass and they'll kind of get all the good clover out of it. The next day you go out there, pick it up and move it and set it down again, and they start all over. You know this was in like 2020, and you know we had a lot of time on our hands, and so I would I loved going out. Too much time on your hands. Almost, uh, the chickens help kind of cover that though, because you know it's just so cool to wake up in the morning and I've got the, the the two dogs that will go outside and take care of their business, and then you go take care of the chickens, and and they're just you know you get to know them and you kind of understand their language and what they're trying to tell you, and mostly it's hurry up, and give me some food, you know, and and make sure the water's good, and it we, we just couldn't uh, we just couldn't keep it up though yeah my wife too busy and i got busy on tour again and so um unfortunately the chickens were rented so they were able to go back to their uh their main shot <laughs> rented rented chickens all right let's let's go back a little bit um back in 2021 crash of the crown was released this was another fantastic studio album from the band um you have been described um in studio as being laser focused is that a kind way of saying you are very ocd <laughs> a, a, a little bit yeah it was just details uh, mm -hmm. and we just we just love the details you know you can always step but you, you don't want to uh analyze something to death and and you don't want to take the humanity out of it you just want want you want the grooves to be right you want your performance to be right can it can you make it better you know or the every little detail and you know, we we have a certain sound that we like to keep you know we like mm -hmm. the small room drums and uh you know uh real amps and uh, gibsons and fenders and things like that that have a recognizable tone and um it, making the record in 2020 uh, there was the added challenge of everybody was stuck at home so Todd, fortunately, the technology tends to keep up with whatever the needs are. And so yeah. their technology came along where we could, um, we could see each other and uh, Todd played all his drums at home and we would watch him on a Zoom uh, call and he would be recording uh, at his home uh, Pro Tools rig. And as soon as he would finish, they would play it back and it would come back over my studio speakers. Just, it's kind of like being in the studio. When, when you're yeah. in the studio with the drummer, the drummer gets up, leaves the control room, goes out to the drum room and plays and you're watching him on a television monitor. And when he comes back in, you all sit, listen to it. So uh, once we got used to that, uh, that way of doing it, it just became we're just like in the studio and you're in the other guys in the other room. All right. So the opposite of a studio is the hotel room. All right. And we can yeah. see that you're sitting in one right now, but I know so much happens out on the road, whether it be songwriting, even, you know, demo recordings and all that, which hotels have the best acoustics? Do you have a favorite? Well, you know, hotel rooms they pretty much all have good acoustics because there's all, all these soft surfaces. There's mm -hmm. carpet, there's mattresses, there's a couch, uh, and very few reflective sur uh, surfaces. So it's actually a great place to uh, to do music. We just, in fact, we we do have a uh, a portable rig. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had the time to set it up and and uh, and because we're we're going to do some songwriting out here, uh, which we did uh, for our last out. You know. Some of the songs from our last album were written on the road in a hotel room on a portable rig. 
Um, but we're, we're, you know, we're still kind of new in this tour. And once th there comes a certain point where everything is kind of done and you're getting into a routine and then you can take the time to get up and spend a couple of hours a day working on new stuff. It's just, it's a busy day. Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, it's a job. You may be a rock star and you're in a rock band, but it's still a job and you got to get up. You got to do the things. And, and it's not all about that, you know, 90 minutes on stage. There's the stuff all before and after. I know. And it's 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 one of the, you know, as musicians, we're used to being pretty free spirits doing, you know, having our own times that we do things. And it's usually whenever we want to do it out here. There's a discipline, though, because, you know, especially when you're on a, a, a three act tour like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we're all used to as well. So we're kind of uh, hippies, but we have the discipline. So we're we're like trained. We're like a like a show dog. <laughs> all right. Now Tommy Shaw of Styx is joining me right now. Um, we're talking about the, there's the tour live and unzoomed. Uh, there's 2021's album Crash of the Crown. Um, in the in the news recently, there have been um, these great photos from outer space that have been published. Have you seen these? I have. Okay, I gotta talk outer space with Tommy Shaw. I mean, like everyone wants to believe that you're just obsessed with outer space and spaceship. So let's talk space. Well, who's, you know, I, I just love going out at night and, and my wife and I have a, a vacation home down in, in Florida that we go down to and it's in this little village that's very uh, hip to uh, light pollution so yeah. no one no one gets to have light that's like lighting up the sky uh there's you know there's there's sea turtles nearby and so they're very very conscious about that stuff so i just love walking out there at night and looking up and it's we saw the uh the, the um uh you know when the, the, the eclipse of the full moon oh yeah yeah that like blood moon that was yeah, right moon yeah so we were out we saw that uh, outside in, in a dark sky, uh, but it's very common to be out there and just, you know, you can see the edges of the Milky Way there. And uh, yeah, I got obsessed with, with the, the, the mission to Mars. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we've got, we have these, uh, these, these little apps where you can see what, what constellations are there and which one that you're standing under. And yeah, the nighttime is, uh, where you can see the sky is just an amazing thing. And every once in a while, I've, I've had this knack for walking out in my front yard in Nashville on a, on a dark night and looking up and going, there's a space station. <laughs> because it's, un, I don't know if you Yeah, and you see the little guy going across, right? Yeah, and there, there are no blinking lights and it looks mm -hmm. kind of coppery. And it's like, you know, what are the chances you're gonna walk outside and see that? And it's happened quite a few times. It's so fun. It's so fun. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk about um, making things new and fun for your fans, yet also delivering exactly what they want and have heard on the albums. So when you're out on tour, you're like, sure, you want to jam, you want to do something different because you do have so many return fans. So you want to <laughs> surprise them. But then there are the people who maybe have never seen you in person and they want to hear what was recorded on the album. How do you balance that? Uh, we just have to... You know we're fans ourselves, and and it's like, what would we want to hear, or, or you know, what would we be okay with? And because we're we don't just make albums just to fulfill a contract or mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing. We we make albums when we have good songs that we believe in and and had recorded something that we that we accept as a great album. So and then we we pick and choose what song do you you think we could slide in there that would would sound like it belongs in the set. Mm -hmm. So we 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 go back back and forth a lot on that, uh, and so we do a, a couple of new songs uh, in in our set. Actually, three pieces of new three or four pieces of new music, um, and they sound like sticks, and they're really good songs, and and we play the hell out of them. And so uh, it's, it works, Yeah. but you gotta be careful with that. You can't be, uh, you still, you have to keep the audience in mind you, because they want to, they want to like you and you give them something that sounds like an, like an extension of what 
they've known from the past. Um, that, that's what we try to do because we're still us as writers or our spirits are the same. And, you know, we, we like to write about certain things and, um, and to get to perform that, like that for one thing, it shows you that you're not just stuck in the past, that you're still yeah. uh, alive and, you know, uh, prescient human being who's still got more music in them. Tommy, how has your writer changed over the years since 1976 now to 2022? 20, uh, uh, what, what are the things you now find important to have in a dressing room? Um, you know, it's probably gotten simpler. Yeah. Because we have catering and uh, we have hospitality. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get there, there's uh, our thing is chicken soup, chicken noodle soup we've been traveling and that sort of thing and it's just it, it's like going to your mom's what do you need you need some chicken noodle soup and so that that will kind of open up our afternoon while we're waiting for catering uh and then it, it, there's so much food it's, and, and there's and wine and beer and whatever you know if there's some kind of alcohol that a particular person wants to have after the show there's all this stuff all around and um I'm most of the time just saying no to everything. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not going to the dessert table today because my my pants fit right now. <laughs> but there's so much good. Every once in a while, it's like, okay, I'm I'm staying away from the dessert table for a couple of days. But uh, yeah, there's there's they really we uh, uh, our management and promoters they really like to keep us healthy, and so there's just these great uh, you know you know there's salmon and and, uh, vegan food and great salads and uh, all kind of temptations for desserts. So it, it does keep us, you know, keep us all running. When you get home and you're uh, not on the road, do you like to cook or are you still kind of like, nah, I like it just being served up. I I'm happy getting takeout or, you know, wh whatever anyone else is around can cook, but I'll sit back and relax. I, I, I can make eggs and toast and that's kind of, there you my go. Wife would cook, and I know she would love she would love it if I cooked. But I've, you know, some people are just not. It's just not in their uh, in their game in their playbook. And uh, so she still loves me. But I, I I know she would love it if I could learn to cook a couple of things. But uh, I, I'm just such a dyed in the wool musician, and I've. Um, anyone who knows me that it, they know a lot of times my head is, is in the clouds because there's always some kind of music rolling that, that's just on uh, you know repeat in my head it's always and it's not always good music things get born like that you know I pick up a guitar and a lot of times like I don't know if you heard that song uh, uh, sound the alarm off our new record it's this acoustic guitar song and I tuned it up to an open E chord. And this, this is way back when we were doing a uh, residency in Las Vegas with Don Felder. And uh, I just turned, and I always turned, you know, my phone or my iPad on and hit record. And I just started playing. And I just kind of sang, sound the alarm, almost completely just stream of consciousness like. So, uh, those are the good things that can happen. Sometimes uh, it's it's some silly stuff. And I, I did this one song, and I wish I could find a copy of it. I was just kind of bored in 2020. And I did this song called Haste Makes Waste Every Time, because it's true. You know, anytime I'm in a hurry, it usually takes me twice as long to, to do something. And the song just went, haste makes waste every time. 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 Repeat. And then it just repeats over like that. But I would add a new vocal part every time until it just became this, this huge vocal group. And, and then I just said, I made like a five minute version of it. And I, and I played it for everybody. I thought it was funny. They thought it was the most annoying thing they'd ever heard. It is but, the song that stuck in your head. <laughs> but it's true. But I, every time 
you know, I make a mistake because I try and I'm in haste. That's what comes out of my mouth. Tommy, thank you so much for sharing all these great nuggets with us. I really appreciate your time. I mean, it's really cool to hear about these things. Unfortunately, that song's now going to be stuck in my head all day. So I also yeah. hate you. <laughs> well, let's see. We'll say, yeah, yeah. You probably will. Hate. Um, all right. Everyone can check uh, Sticks out on the road with Ario Speedwagon, Loverboy. The tour is called Live and Unzoomed. Um, yeah. You know, have fun out us. there. Come see us. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know, just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into, or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.